and I'm not moving the particles. Remember that when you want to move particles, then you're going to do things like add actions. So you can add a move and, and you can add some velocity and stuff, but I'm not really interested in moving particles today. Today I just want to show you how you create them. But why am I only creating ones when I had five drugs in my sprite? Well, that comes down to the type generation strategy here. Basically, this is saying that how, how do you want to create your particles? You can sequentially assign them, which means they'll go in order, one, two, three, four, five. Or you can randomly assign them, which means you might create a three, you might create a one, like in, in a random order. So, but then what these two say is on what frame are you going to put the first frame of the sprite? So in my case, I've got the first frame of the sprite on frame one. And I've got here five different sprites, right? Because I created one, two, three, four, five. So that means my fifth one is on frame five. So now if I put um, one and five, then I should have, I should be creating uh, more than just number ones. Let's do, instead, let's do a randomly assigned type number. So now, as soon as I hit random, then it's randomly choosing between particle one and particle five when it's creating them. So now you see all the one, two, three, four, five show up. So in a lot of particle systems, probably most particle systems, you want to randomly do them. Like in the fire example, you want them to be random. You don't necessarily want it to be um, generated like all the same particles. But sometimes you might want to have the particles all going together. So let's just take another quick gander over at what happens on the rendering tab here because the first thing that you see on the rendering tab is the sprite rendering strategy and here it says use the particle type. And so basically you can have the particle type define how it renders and you might even want to have a cycle in there. So Sometimes there's one particle example that uses the, the lemmings. It's called lemmings. Uh, let's just see where that is. It's in your particle it's in replicators, lemmings. So in that example, there are some little people that are walking. So if you have a walk cycle, then you'll sequentially, instead you'll sequentially assign the type numbers, and you'll also have a cycle on there, and um, you'll put the number of drawings that are in your cycle so that they can actually age over time. Um, and in order for this to show up, for them to age over time, you need to have some movement in there, and I have no movement. So let's continue on with this being on random for now. So I've got one, two, three, and four, four and five. And um, you can see that the fives aren't being created so often because there's a low, uh, there's a low probability of it um, reaching that number. Now the other thing that is kind of interesting is this concept of age at birth. So they can start out being a few frames old. So if I start them being three frames old with a standard deviation of two, then um, it just gives them an extra birth, so or an, or an extra age. And this really, this stuff really shows up when you start to have effects, or when you have a number of um, particles in there. So for example, if we take a look, let's just for a second here step away from that. I wanted to show you that um, generation strategy with the numbers, but let me take a step away from that for a second and I'm going to import in the animated grass example. So um, with the animated grass example, here we go, sorry I just had to turn off my fire. With the animated grass example you have a number of different drawings that are in the sprite that defines the grass and those are all moving. So if we take a look at this in more detail, a little bit closer. So it's a little bit slow on my MacBook here. Um, okay, so if we look at this, all the animated grass is swaying together in the wind, but it's not swaying together 100% the same or together. If we look at what the emitter looks like inside the grass, so let's just go inside our grass example and check out the emitter, then you see that it is sequentially assigning them and the particle type starts from 1 and it goes all the way up to 10. And then they start from an age of birth of 1 and then there's a standard deviation. So the standard deviation means it could start with an age of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. So 
you know, that little bit of variation makes it look like there's a slight change in that. But then when we check out that rendering strategy, remember at the top there, you have the ability to put the cycle in. So then the generation says where are they created. So you can create particles anywhere from those first 10 uh, frames on there. But when you actually render it out, you can choose to use the, um, use the age to render it out, and then you can render it out the certain number of drugs in the cycle. So if you use the age to render it out, if it's rendered out here, it starts from an age of either one to four. So there's a standard deviation of three. That means the particles are different by three frames. And then when you actually play it, it's going to play up until 35, since that's where my frame or my cycle ends here. And then it's going to start again from the beginning. So that's why it ends up looking like it has a cycle. So I gave you like way too much information in there, and that's just the beginning of what you can do with the emitter. And there are other things that I think we should discuss in the emitter, so I think I should stop here because you're probably overwhelmed already. Um, and we'll continue next week. Thanks, guys.